Tell me when it starts, then. Take my phone for me. Please. Don't let me Hey Jan, I got. Give me just a minute to turn off the volume. I turn it off so that I don't have feedback. Wait just a minute. I think this one. I think my laptop hey, works Dad. better. Hi. Yay, it's me again. Okay, no, it's not me. Okay. I don't know why I did I it. Wrong. Who knows? Yeah. We're checking my phone. We went crazy. Okay, let's go. Okay, well, I can't get my Hold on. Jan doesn't have her camera, but I can hear her voice. Let me turn up the volume. Let me turn up the volume. Miss Jane. Jane? Okay. Can y'all hear me now? Jane. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yay, yes, finally. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad. It's really, uh, Today we're just going to do a really simple quickie. We're going to talk about masking. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I can get the glare off my earbrush, but I doubt it. But before I do, Riley asked me to, she wanted this flower, so I'm going to do some quick... Uh, that don't work out. Oh, that's kind of cool. Wait, just a minute. Let me pull this back a little bit. I don't think I'm in the right place, but hey. 
What you can use it to stamp with. What you can use it to stamp yeah. with. There you go. Don't tell it's still wet. We made some Hey, 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 girl, hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. Yep, there's my there's my two. To, yay! What we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about just a quick overview of masking. And I know that you're both in control of your machines, and you chicks, by the way, um, Mitzi, are just terrific. They're fabulous. <laughs> Thanks. They are. You do some really good work, and I think you're, you're thinking outside the box, and it's only going to get better and better and better. I got another project, um, but I can't show you guys until... DC9 releases it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And remember, I'm going to teach you to keep thinking now. Don't burn out. <laughs> yeah. That's one well, of the things. Well, don't you know, if you have anything to burn, we have to keep, here keep here tonight. Tonight. my fingers crossed <laughs> that uh, y'all will make the cut, you know. So, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody really gives it a good shot. <laughs> And I think I'm really happy, even though my video was um, kind of discombobulated last time, I really think that it got the point across <laughs> about learning how to control that e-brush is really, really important. And I just realized uh, I've been working in my studio and all my, all my uh, markers land on their side. And <laughs> Mitzi Annie, I know that you store your markers in boxes. I want to show you what, how I store mine. Now these are the crates. I got these over at Walmart, I think. You see them? What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Are we cycling? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Okay. I can't see Jen. No, Jen doesn't have her camera on. Oh, okay. I can hear Jen. I just can't hear. No, my, camera my camera's not working right. I don't got a, a, but you know how you brought the boxes to put yours in? Uh-huh. But when and at my desk working, now these the box lid doesn't shut on this, but I do enjoy it. It's a, a crate that I got at Wally World. And then I took the insert, which I wasn't going to do, and I cut them out. Uh -huh. Put them in between. And that way I can just reach up and grab them. So, and I have two of those. They stack on top of each other, and I put those on my desk. I like your idea better because you could travel with them a little bit better. And I just noticed something that while I was re-cleaning my studio, that I had left them like this, which is not good for them. Oh, no. But I know that if I, if I stand them up like this for a while, they'll go back to being fine. The only thing that was really bad is I have refills for each one of them, mm -hmm. and I had to stack. I had to actually store those in. Uh, I don't know why now. It's now her, her thing's muted. I don't know. Um, I had to put them in those uh, airtight bags because uh -huh. it's alcohol. And even with the, uh, I don't. It's still. She must have muted herself. At any rate, I store them in airtight bags because I don't want them to, even though they're sealed, a rubber, they can still leak air. And so that's why I went ahead and, and shut them off in an airtight bag. I have one of those uh, things that pulls the air out, but I'm afraid that that will the ink right out of the bottle, too. So, But they're all in airtight. I took a straw and sucked all the air out. <laughs> I'm totally crazy. But what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about masking. And I know that you know, because I've seen your work, you do a terrific job. But masking can be as simple as using you know, eye cuts that you have already. And we, you know, we've talked about that. And then there's some various techniques with die cutting, uh, excuse me, with uh, using your e-brush with a stencil. You can actually just do the line to give you that, that little look, or you can actually go back and do the whole solid area. 
You can use things like sequin. Um, they call this punchinella. You can tell that I do sequins that I sew because I call it sequin waste, but I call it punchinella if you're a scrapbooker. But, um, punchinella if you're a scrapbooker. Punchinella, nice Italian name for sequins. But, but I call it sequin waste, but it's punchinella. But I call it sequin waste, but it, it really is a great thing. I'm, I'm echoing back on myself. I'm turning down a little bit. That's the yeah. thing about broadcast. If on the other thing, I didn't have to worry about me hearing myself. Okay. I thought it was so my camera. Then you yeah. can venture into the world of quilting uh, yeah. acrylic. Yeah. Now this is the stuff that you cut out templates with for for that. I actually did use it on my cutting machine, and I have some curves that I put in, and you can use me to cut. And this cuts really good on a cutting machine, but it's really great too. For masking off areas, if she can find anything to work. Let me see if anything works today. After I did, after I left it all standing up overnight. And then I'm going through my, my things and finding hey, that they're not there. Go. It gives you some nice control. So. The only thing, though, is when you're doing that, you'll notice I have a large amount of overspray. And if I wanted to control the overspray, now they tell you to spray into the item so that the spray goes over it. But I can show you there are some ways to control the overspray more. If you were doing a project, you'd say you had, you wanted to do a stop. And you know, when you're doing anything that um, has two ends, when you're moving the brush back and forth like this, at the ends there's going to be more paint because you're actually closing it double the time you're doing the film. So what I want to ask you is, this is just to give you an example, is to take two full sheets of paper and then tape them down and make sure that your starting point is on one sheet, bring it across, across on the other and go back and forth that way so you don't have the blobs on the end. You know, and I know that you know that already, but it's always good to just have that review. Then there are also things that are really wonderful. I've got a big roll and a little roll. Then there are also things that are really Yeah, this one is really, really fine stuff. And you can actually use this on automobiles. And it's something called a, this is Iowata's Frisket. And what you can do is you can go ahead and draw out your item put it on and then use a razor knife. I've actually used a vinyl cutter on the machine to do it. But you can use a razor knife if, if you're so talented. <laughs> I use a light table a lot. I used to use a light table a lot. But it's a really fine removable plastic. And that way when you have it down, let's see. You see I was real popular with my granddaughter when I let her do all the buttons. <laughs> There's no buttons to do on here. So you can actually cut it. Cut it, Deb, cut it. I should have cut it with a paper on the back. And this one has a low tack, so it won't tear up your paper surface. But just to give you an idea, so you would cut it. And guys, there's all kinds of cool stuff coming down the pipe now. So this, your airbrush is just the beginning. There's new stuff that's going to be out for CHA in January, so some cool stuff. So I would actually put this down. Say I had a picture drawn underneath it, which I don't. And for some reason, I have some junk under it. Let's see. Roll it back like you would do vinyl. If you find that it's got too much tack to it, you can actually put it on your clothes and pull some of the tack off. But basically, what you would do is you would hope that my razor knife didn't disappear, which it did. <laughs> okay, Deb. It's really funny. With my granddaughter being here, I don't want to have too, too many of these things laying around. But you can actually you know, cut your design. I'm just going to cut something really weird. And what I recommend too, please cut, please cut, is that you keep the piece that you're pulling out if you can. Because you can always put it back in and then you can do the reverse. And of course, I should have pre-cut it, but I thought, oh no, I could just do it here. Not realizing that my X-Acto blade was older than most people that are viewing this. But it's a, uh, when you get it up, there we go. I used to use this stuff for watercolor a lot. So if you have something like you're going to do portraiture, which we are going to talk about, but I figured I'd do mass first before we went there. 
because it's going to be really important when you're trying to do portraits and things like that to use something like this because you really want to have a little bit more cleaner lines. It, this is just it, for beginners and then you can always move on to the other. Come on Deb, put this pen in. I am hitting it good. So I would do this, turn off the machine, then I can take the piece that I removed and I can go back and it dries almost instantly since I'm using alcohol markers. Go back and then I'm going to try and get it as close as I can. Usually I'm sitting down at a desk doing this. So. Then I can take the other side which is really cool and I can slowly peel it off and you can reuse it too if you save your paper and you can hope that you didn't just do what I did which is pull the other part off. Take your finger and hold down the other. This stuff is really wonderful. I have an old, uh, an old uh, tube of it from when I did a book. How much there, does it usually really cost? Good. I hear somebody again. Yay! It's me. I know I'm not alone. Yay! <laughs> and I actually, this is the crazy part. I, I just realized that I probably cut through the paper too when I used a razor knife, not realizing it was that thin. I think we lost Jan. We lost Jan? She'll be back. She's doing, she's craft night at her, at her house. Oh, okay. She'll be back. She will return. I might send her another invite. I don't know how her weather is. Or do you have cool she, weather right now? Been, um, she couldn't see your video. Oh, goodness. Well, maybe she... There she is. Can you see me now? Can you see me now, Jan? There she is. Yes, that beautiful face, that wonderful lady. I feel so blessed to know all of you. I've had more fun. So let's go with something that's really strange looking. Let's use a green. Let's use green just to see it. Okay, so I still have the frisket on. Or whatever you want to call it. I've always called it frisket. And this is just to show you that it really does a, a fabulous job. And if it doesn't, no, it's, it's user error. And the nice thing about frisket, too, is it's removable and then you can use it again. That's well, awesome. Well, we that dark green. Put it back. Yeah. What can I say? And then I'll tell you something I found too, and I don't know. I use these. I love these. <laughs> Is that a dental pick? Yes, it's a it's a dental <laughs> pick, but it's really good for picking up like frisket and for cutouts on your stuff. I have a toolkit, but I like these. It comes. This is a tartar cleaner, I think, and I love that little pick. They both work wonderful. And this little thing, I can really get up underneath stuff. I'm crazy. But I love that this really does give me, because once I do a whole picture, I can mark it all off. And I mean, look how, I mean, there's no overspray. The lines are really clean. So if you're doing, um, let's see, Annie, if you're doing a whole picture, mm -hmm. say like when we do, um, and when we do our photograph work, you'll notice that you're going to have a whole face there. Yes, you can have overspray, but we're going to do something just tight, just for a, a modeling. I was going to ask you about that because I, I don't like the overspray. I mean, certain things, yeah, for shading, but yeah, just like you said, for tight pictures, it's you want something clean lined. Yes, and this really does do it. Although, let me tell you too, there's you can do this too. You can use masking tape. You know, like if you're going to do your edges, but the one thing about it, with this, I can see through it, and oh, I can see my colors coming through. That's right. Yeah, so I that's, lost your picture, Debbie. Oh, you lost me. No, no, no. I got sound, but no picture. Wait, let me see. Am I back? Yes. Yay! <laughs> I think it's bandwidth, and we've had some really, really bad weather. <laughs> it's over with now. Now we have, we have. Uh, it feels like fall. It's wonderful. Oh, it's, it's still hot here. Uh, well, y'all didn't have that front go through? We had a little bit of rain, so now it's just muggy. Oh, girl, it's like in the 60s at night here. It's heavenly. 
No, it's humid. It's like mosquito fest weather uh, here. Now, one thing that works really, really nice too are these great uh, chipboard cutouts. Mhm. Mm That's a pretty one. Uh, yeah, Leaky Shed. They make some of the nicest. They really do. That's the ones that I did. The uh, I've got to watch where I am. <laughs> Leaky Shed, they have some beautiful projects. I did that those repurposed cheese boxes with their stuff. But I really, really love this, this bird cage. And the nice thing about it is with this, I can actually mask and use it again and again. And then I can, if I'm going to use it for a project, I can actually uh, just spray it all black and then put my gold on it or whatever I want to put on it. Glitter. So I can actually use this several times. And I think I would probably buy a set to use because they're not that expensive to use for stenciling because this would really I, I think actually it would make a most beautiful piece I think we're so lucky nowadays because we do have we have cutters and then we have all these people that make these great let's use a fluorescent color everybody loves fluorescence don't they <laughs> um, have you tried their fluorescent markers yet I have not you need to you need to make something really kind of Mardi Gras for your girls, something bright and wild. You know, and I'm I'm always preaching about going back and, and reseeding that thing, and I just found out that the fluorescent marker is really really light. Oh, girl, that ain't that's not going to show, but it's there. Let's find something. I found a white marker at Hobby Lobby, and a white I, marker. A white marker. Okay, tell me what brand, because I'm looking for opaque. I can't remember. I was going to pick it up, but it was between the white marker and the pack of metallics, and I chose the pack of metallics instead. But when you look, when you see it again, would you give me a name on it? Sure, I'll take a picture for you. Yay, because I'm looking for opaques, whites, because they're great with projects. They're Sharpie great. was supposed to have come out with one. Who, who, who? Sharpie. Oh, I wish they would. I know they have the paint I markers. Know. And it's true. You got to go back and just try it again till you get it. There we go. But these these chipboard pieces, they're really terrific just for doing a quick stencil. And then I could have I could have actually masked off the edges so that I had a clean picture. But I love, you know, just think about what you could do with that. And then if you had the negative piece, which you don't, but you can make a negative piece for yourself by using a cutting program like, you know the one, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> the one that we use, it really does. You can use a cutting program or whatever, and what you would have to do is when you do something like this, well, this one you could actually, I don't know, you'd still lose that, but what we would do is put a break in so that it would hold the pieces, and then you'd have to hand color it. But I think that it's fabulous. I love using the chipboard pieces too to to use as mask. And then they make quilting templates. You have the like we said the punchinella. You have so many I have two rows of that. And don't be fearful of going out on the internet, <laughs> which I know you're not already, but uh, they have several airbrushing sites that have free templates. They have the free you know the hand templates that I use all the time like this you can actually download them free so I downloaded some of these uh, fire ones that have the the wonderful curves and cut them out with my cutter on the uh, quilting template and cool. it, yeah it was great so those kind of things can be really done well on fabric sometimes I have to starch it so it doesn't run through the fabric as much or make sure that when I'm doing it so that I don't sit there and pull it so it bleeds a lot of people when they're when they're doing markers and such they do them I see you hopping up and down there girl <laughs> <laughs> she's got a little one I know I almost had one in my lap too but when you're I've noticed that some people want to saturate when they're doing stuff and you have to really watch and not saturate because if you saturate it's really going to um, cause your project to have runs and, and uneven spaces. Also, when you get into the cake decorating markers and the, the dyes with that, make sure too that you let the surface of your frosting dry so you want to do a quick spritz and then go back and let it dry and then a quick spritz and go back and let it dry because if not you'll find the icing is going to uh, really wick that moisture and be sticky, sticky, sticky. So it's really quick. And Debbie and Jen, I I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> I found that um, 
I, someone had asked the lady on HSN about how she used the cake decorating markers with her e-brush and she was quick to say that she did what our wonderful friend Miss Annie does is she had modified one of the holders because I kept saying there aren't any holders yet for that company so she had actually gone back and she had done that she had modified put one of the pencil holders in so that mm -hmm. she would have those so remember it's it's you know you can do the negative space you can do the positive space you could actually take the butterflies the other side of the butterfly or you could take that and do it too. So there's so much out there to do. Jan, I noticed that you've been really practicing with the things we spoke about too last time. Yep. And that's really great. I, I, the more information, the more practice we get, the better. Is your craft class over already? No. Uh -uh. I put headphones on. Oh, I know, but you, can, you can't leave your people long. I'm not. They'll be running away from you. No, they won't. Let's see, just to do like the edges, which is, I, I really love just edge work on a lot of things. <laughs> so there's so much that you can do with it, and I really enjoy it. And I'll tell you somebody else that really enjoys it. Riley had an opportunity to try it, and she really liked it too. And she's I'll five. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, you can. See, she wants to show you her hand. She's she okay. helps grandma too. So there's her hand. She's she's my helper. She she does all the she does my button pushing when I'm doing my videos. That's so, so she's cool. Really good. You're such a good helper, Riley. Thank you. Ah, did you hear Miss Jan? Did you say thank you to Miss Jan? Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. She's she's my best Can I help helper. You? Well, we're not we're not working right now, but. Remember, anything that you can use to mask is fair game. Whether and even objects. I mean, you can take objects and use those. Like throw a pair of scissors down. Now, remember too that you'll have to use alcohol wipes if you're using alcohol markers to get the paint off. But you can use any item to mask with. So, if yeah. you want control, you're going to use a frisket, and it's just amazing to me because I keep thinking I could peel this off, and that's actually the the thing that we just painted. We put the clear frisket over it. Mm -hmm. town. And you can reuse it again and again if you're going to do the similar project. I also, you having Riley here, learned something else that's really neat. We bought one of those. Um, Mod Podge makes the hot glue molds uh -huh. so that you can make florals out of hot glue. And of course, you, uh, one of the best things, too, to have when you're doing this kind of stuff, by the way, if you use lace or fabric, is you also have that spray on adhesive. And so when I was going to show you this, what I did was I stuck my hand and spray on adhesive. But these are the little flowers that are made with that hot glue. And we found that if you spray them and then turn them like this, you can use them as stamps. <laughs> ah. Yeah, and that's cool. We have to take just a break for a minute. This is Riley's, and she's sharing this with you, Miss Jan, very quickly, and with everybody else, <laughs> just as a little thing because she's helped me. This is her. She's doing pastels, and that's her Wonderful. Pastel. That's her cat, Leo. Cool. Congratulations, oh, Riley. I don't live here, but I live somewhere else, and I have a kitty. That is she, cool. She doesn't live, but Leo, she did his picture so that she could remi remind herself of Leo. Mm-hmm. That's so sweet. Oh. So she's, that's his card. She's sending Leo a card. <laughs> But there's there's really a lot that we can do with that, and I think last time I really kind of sounded like a, you must control your pen, but that's really the way to get the outcome that you want. So whether you're doing crafting, scrapbooking, using this to do paints uh, for cloth, there's so much that we can do with it. It's just that by using the tools that we have available, we'll find that we have a great experience with it, and we'll really enjoy ourselves. And right. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because I know that you really enjoy it and I know that Miss Annie really enjoys it. And I know the people that view our videos later do too. And it, the time may not be right, but it's all about learning, experimenting, getting out there and just playing with it and, and getting out of the box. Right. Right. So, and, and as I was saying before, I'm hoping that we will see, and I don't know, and I'm just very hopeful, that next year we will see some wonderful accessory items to go with our e-brushes because I, so. I know this is not the end of the, the line. I think there's more great things coming out there. That'd be cool. Yep. So like 
Tell me a little bit about, I saw that you were doing these wonderful uh, bags and you're doing a lot of textile work. Are there any tips that you can give us on using fabrics with our e-brush? Um, <laughs> just make sure that you have something underneath it to blot up any extra if it does bleed through. Okay. And I taped my fabric down to a sheet so it wouldn't blow out of the way. Ah, did you have much trouble with the color wicking in the the uh, fabric? Actually, no, because I used um, contact paper as my stencil. Wow, that sounds really cool. So you used uh, actually you used uh, like a frisket for cloth. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And that way too, with the with the contact paper, it's got enough grab to it that it's going to stay put. Right. Were you able right. to reuse it? Um. The, let's see, the bag, I think I just used cardstock mm -hmm. as my mask. And on my, let me show you, I don't know, you can't see it really well. This is just a circle. Oh. Um, and it's just going to be a little round green ring is all. And then I'm going to put, wonderful. then I'll applicate the flowers that I've already painted. Um, well, I can't wait to see it. So it's coming. I got the back, the fusible web on the back of the fabric today, and cut. So, well, we're I'm working on it. No, we go. We sometimes go to uh, trade shows that are at uh, sewing and quilting venues. So you never mm -hmm. know. We may be knocking on your mailbox <laughs> to see if you to go with us. I would like that. Oh, I would love it myself. I would mm -hmm. really enjoy it. I um, think that. There's so many things we can do with this. Well, this is based on a Pat Pat Sloan pattern. Uh -huh. Have you? Do you know who she is? Yes. Okay. Well, um, it's a pattern based on one of her applique patterns that I bought the book from. So, I really, really like it. I like her work. I like her fabrics too. Well, right away when I saw it, I recognized that it was in the style. And yeah. it, you know, it's exciting. I, th I think it's really exciting that you can make something very similar mm -hmm. and enjoy it and have your sense of satisfaction too. Well, I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be a book cover because it's small. Uh huh. So it might just be a book cover rather than a quilt block a or a wall hanging. We'll see. Well, one of the things too, you know, we're talking about maybe going back and doing some frisket work for control with pictures and things like that. But mm -hmm. I also would love to show some of the versatility with the e-brush with fabric because I really do think that there is a wonderful thing for thread painting where you could do your background pieces or colors and then thread paint on top of it. And right. So that's probably going to be one of our quickie shows as well just to show how to start the base for it and then build up with your thread. Yeah, and I want to use modeling paste on a couple of projects that are coming up. Yes. So that's going to be cool. So make sure you share. <laughs> oh, I will. I know you will. I You're a good there. sharer. <clears throat> I just got back into town last night, so um, I know I, I figured you probably whipped out <laughs> <laughs> slightly. Two o'clock this morning. Uh, well, the I, that's what I figured. I said Jan, Jan's probably not going to be here tonight because I thought for sure you'd be tired. But no. I'm so glad that you made it. Well, I am too, and I'm grateful that. Um, the gals came over tonight too, so yeah. we've been doing a few things. We know that you're always working. <laughs> Not crazy. So what? Um, I missed the brisket part because I was having computer issues. Wait a second, Jan. Let me let me get get our volume up a little bit. I I, did, I heard everything else. For some reason, that's far away. Say again. Okay, I missed the part where you used the brisket. Oh, the brisket. Wait, yeah. just a second. Let me pull. Let me pull the sheet up. Come here, Riley, and I'll do it again. Come here, Riley. Quick. Just press the camera. Somebody's calling you. There you go. My 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 little granddaughter's. Mom and brother are are going to talk to her. Oh, so they, they just skyped her on my tablet. Oh, cool. Yes, isn't it nice that you can have all these things? 
<laughs> yeah. And all these things that you can't find. Hey. So, frisket basically is a plastic. It looks like saran wrap. Right. This is the, the commercial brand that I purchased. It's, it's actually made by Iowata, which is my airbrush people. Mm -hmm. And this one is a little, it's got a little bit more tack, but I've used it already. And what I do is I'm going to put it down. Excuse me. And I'll go back and seal my edges. Quick, get in there. Now I use a lot of uh, I use a lot of spray adhesive too because I do a lot of I like to shoot through fabric a lot. Mm -hmm. When you do this, though, make sure that that you already have it drawn out on the back. And if you're going to cut with a razor knife, make sure you don't cut your paper like I did earlier. <laughs> if I'm going to do a portrait with this, I'd have it all drawn out on the on my frisket already. Uh huh. Because this stuff will hold a, a drawing, even though it's shiny, it will hold a drawing. And usually I don't have this much trouble, but I'm reaching over a table, of course. Right. I know I heard, uh, one time I heard Nancy Zeman talk about how much people think, you know, it's so easy and it's not. But I thought, oh, yeah, sure she's saying that, but it's true. Okay, so you would put down your frisket, go to right. your, your pins, pull out a pin, pull out a pin down. I love these things. I, I have more fun with them. Because you can use them. Oh, look at that. And I'm getting so good now that I don't even have to try and do that spot there. So you would do real quick, pull out your pen, snap it back in, put it back in this little house so I'll remember it's there. Mm -hmm. Go over to your frisket. <laughs> now before I do that, I'm going to put my other piece back on. And usually these alcohol markers dry so quick that I can do that. So I'll go back. Now again, you forgive me for not being exact. No, you're fine. It's to get the basic idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm having her show me over again. Jan, I'm telling you. Because it should be a little... If I was at a drawing table doing what... A, normally when I'm illustrating, I'm really concentrating and I'm sitting there doing this stuff. Okay, so I've got my other frisket back in the hole. Mm -hmm. I peel this off. The tack is actually perfect right now, except for where I cut the image with a razor knife. It's peeling that up. That's great. Best I don't. Uh, not bad, not bad. It has a, this one really has a light tack to it, so you, I can actually fold it over on itself and undo it. Oh, that's cool. Yep. And then where I pull the paper up, I just take my finger and pull it back down. See, it's, it's there. It's still got a pretty light tack, so I can actually open her back up. Yeah, and I'll stick her on. I'll stick her on the wall so I can find her. <laughs> yes, you know when you're back. When you when you do this kind of stuff, you know that your housework goes out the wall. That's it. So let's find something dark so that it would be really scary, and you would think, "Oh Lord." Now you can actually work this in an area. So I may have the whole thing co uh, covered, then I would only work in areas. But we're not going to do that today. We're just doing examples. And I love this stuff. I have several rolls of it. So I'm going to paint over what I've already done. Because sometimes, you see, while we did this, it bled over a little bit. And there's sometimes when you're doing a project and you want no bleed. Right. No bleed at all. Okay, Chick, be quiet on your call. <laughs> She's Skyping right now while we're doing this. And you see, look how, see how nice it came out? Mm -hmm. And I don't know because I probably have, I was off a little bit on my edge, but that's my fault. It's not the brushes. But if you can see, it gave us a real nice. Yeah, it looks good. See, and that was my tape was off where the white showing through. <coughs> but it really does. It really does help a lot. So that way you can you can actually cut some really tight areas without bleeding. And again, I apologize, but because I am leaning over a disc, that's no excuse, but it's true. Yeah. Bring me your computer. So you have that, and there's some there's various brands. I have that, but I have when I did uh, I did some work for somebody, and I had to do a lot of pieces. And so, so instead of buying the small roll like you see, this is 
this is that wonderful. It's 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 a glossy finish. Now I have a matte finish too. Mm -hmm. It's a 24 inch roll, I believe. Which Lord knows where I just ate it and lost it. But it was right here too at the table a minute ago. But it's gone. Go in the other room. Oh, here we go. This is a mat, and you can tell it's pretty old. <laughs> what would help if I backed up on? <laughs> now this one is real, real thick, but this was for illustration board, and I mean it lasts forever. So I was able to do a lot of drawings on it, and then cut it up and lay it down because I worked on an illustration board, and I could reuse this a lot. It's very thick. But it's beautiful, and it, it, the tack on it is very low, so it doesn't pull off your illustration board when you're using it. Mm -hmm. It lasts forever. So when I'm doing paintings or, or something that I really have to be tight, even when I watercolor a lot of times, I can use this. So it depends on what I'm doing with it. But remember, it's, it's all about having fun with it, and I think both of you think outside of the box a lot, and I'm really pleased when I see your projects. I'm so excited because I know that I feel very confident that you're helping people learn about their e-brushes when I'm not. So I'm really excited about that because I feel like now I've got somebody that can share that with me, and I don't feel like I'm the only one, and we... I can learn from you guys. That's the whole thing. We need to all learn from each other. Right. This is this is a great new tool. It's not the same as an airbrush. It's got a little bit of variation with it. When I use an airbrush, I can really go down really tight and really, really detailed and not have the overspray like this. But because it is blowing off of a marker nib, it's a little bit uh, more. But still, I think with the projects that you're showing, there's some great things out of there. I'd like to take it a step further and maybe actually use it. This is going to sound crazy, but I embroidering on soap. You know, I do the embroidery. Now the they're shooting fireworks. How wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy over the fireworks. <laughs> I'm going to cry. But, um, I was thinking that I could actually take soap and then do some color work on soap for mm -hmm. like gift soaps. So I'm going to have to try that and see maybe if I use the water-based paint, if I could use that on soaps for gift soaps. Sounds crazy, huh? Have you ever done any mm -hmm. of the watering on soaps? No, I haven't done anything with soaps for a long, long time. Well, um, I embroidery on tool, and then you put it on the soap, and you know, let the surface of the soap get tacky, and it sticks on it like a candle. Oh, we ought to try candles. We ought to do some kind of surface embellishment on a candle and see how it works. Oh, I bet it would work. I bet you could do it with tissue paper. That would be great. We're gonna have to do something really. That would be a great. Oh, I see that as something we could do in the future too. What kind of soap do you use, Debbie? You can use any uh, any brand like ivory, anything the, that's got a big uh, surface uh, area. The Spectrum Noirs, Prismacolors, and the Sharpie should all work on the melt and pour because it's an alcohol base. The alcohol will just evaporate right. right on the soap, so it should be fine. So we should have a really good time. See, there's so many avenues that we can use. Not only can you use this for scrapbooking, I mean, think about the things you could use for holidays and gifting. So there's so well, much I just saw there. a really cool idea too that I thought I would try with some lampshades. Wow. <laughs> Post pictures. Yeah, home decor. But yeah. you know too, I have to say because you know we're going to be picking for the video uh, design team soon, not video design team for the eBrush design team very shortly. Mm -hmm. And so with your beautiful photos and things like that, you never know. And I'm hoping that a lot of other people, too, will start to really put some stuff out there so that we can see it. I think it will happen. It's just, I think people are just still a little bit afraid of it. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, you two jumped into it. And y'all, I know you were as, as frightened as everybody else. Yeah, but, I don't I'm know. I'm sorry, my dogs are, the people across the street think the 4th of July is still today. <laughs> and so, for some reason, they're shooting the fireworks, and the dogs are just panic-stricken. But they, instead of running away from them, they're barking at them. So, yeah. Mitzi. Yes. Um, 
Did you guys change your locks and stuff today? Not today. I've been too tired, and my husband's actually been um, running errands all day. Mhm. Mm but yeah, we're looking into it. Good. The, so, I guess the one we got um, right now is good enough that they couldn't get through. Mhm. Mm but they did put a little damage on our door. You mean while you're at home, they were trying while to break we your door? While were at home, it was one thirty in the morning. Did they catch them? No, my husband See, that's really like, scary, looked scary. out the window, looked through the peephole because he heard the noise, but he couldn't see anything. So he's like, I better stop messing around. And he just called the police and mm -hmm. they went around the house. They went through the neighborhood, couldn't find anything. Well, that's awful. I thought you're all okay. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, thank God. That is yeah. terrible. I did not get no sleep. <laughs> well, um, I don't. I know your husband's into. A, isn't he into computers? Yes. This is going to sound crazy, but our our other house, we do have a camera right above the door in the in the uh, air intake. We have an attic fan. Uh huh. And that way, we can see what's going on out there. <laughs> yeah, that w that was one of our. Next things that we're we're gonna upgrade our um, alarm system because now they have the um, cameras that have the app yes, you know, on yes. your house from your phone. So yeah, it's so frightening. We live in a world where there's people that are actually bold enough where they would break into a house that has people in it. I know. That's what, I'm like okay. This they the lights are on inside the house. Uh. They I'm like okay they. It's not just trying to steal something because they're trying to get in while we're in it. So I'm like, oh my god! Yes, you know, yes. I'm just thinking of my kids. Yeah. This is tick. Papa Hado. Papa Hado. Tick on him. All right. Well, I'm gonna get back to my friends and that, and we'll check in with you guys later. Well, All thank right, you for joining fun. me and tell everybody happy craft night. Okay, yeah. I will. <laughs> All right, bye, Thank Jack. you for joining me, and I'll bye. see you all again soon. All right, bye. Bye-bye.